Yo, so guys, welcome back to another video. This is another general knowledge reaction, and this one, wait, is this all good? Yeah, it's all good. This one is um, the biggest empires in world history, and it's been a few weeks since I've read to this guy's channel, but I do enjoy his videos a lot, and I saw this pop up, and I thought it'd be a fun like, little reaction to do. And yeah, I mean, there's not even much to say about this, really. I'm just going to get into the video. I do usually ramble at the start, but I'm not even going to. But I hope you guys are going to enjoy. Check out his channel if you haven't already. Also, quick shout out to my Instagram, my Twitter, links in the description, as as well as my second channel on YouTube, links are all there for those interested. But let's get into this one and let's see what the biggest empires in world history are. My guesses are, I know Britain will be there somewhere. Rome, so what would that be seen as Italy? Um, Greece? Greece? Mongolia? I don't know the specific names for them. Portugal, because I know they've colonised a lot of places. And yeah, maybe France. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I'm not going to rabble. Continues Throughout to ramble. Throughout the history of the world, our lands have had many rulers, from ancient tribes to counts, dukes, kings, and most of all, emperors. Many have been the empires which have existed. Some were even only empires in name, Russia as well, their territorial possibly. size did not really seem that of well, an USSR. empire. But many others were tremendously large. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the top 10 largest empires in history in 10th okay. place portugal portugal's empire like a few on this list was a colonial one meaning the european power traveled through sea exploring new lands and claiming them in its name i just find it crazy them. how a, such a small country like this can can like colonize such a huge country like this Obviously, it's technology and all these different things, but it's just crazy. The resources of those territories and their usage to dominate sea routes and trade. This contrasts with other well. empires which seek to extend their territorial rule in lands adjacent to theirs, as was the case with the Roman Empire, for instance. However, especially due to this nature, it was the first global empire in history and one of the longest lived ever. It began with oh, the conquest wow. of Ceuta in the year. 1415 and technically ended only in 1999 as portugal handed over macau to china almost 600 years over which they dared out into the vast and at the time mostly unexplored oceans reaching lands and sea routes never seen before by europeans and paving the way for other european powers colonial empires the empire's birth had two origins the continuing of the reconquista idea leading portuguese kings to venture into north africa fighting against the moors and a heavy investment that the portuguese kings and princes had in maritime technology there were initial african coastline excursions preparing the settling of those territories by making them accessible after crossing the cape of good hope in today's south africa they reached the indian ocean india itself Indonesia, China, and Japan. Through these explorations, the Portuguese established trade with local rulers and enforced their power through the construction and maintenance of fortresses slash trading posts oh, wow. called Feitorias. Essentially, they didn't really get to a kingdom and say, okay, now we rule this land. They simply established a presence in the territory. Only in Africa and then in America did they establish colonies in the most common sense of the word. A great deal of the Portuguese empire's land was in Brazil, which soon achieved its independence as an empire in its own right, becoming even larger than all the remaining Portuguese territories at the time. More lands were lost to the Dutch at the time of the Iberian Union as they were at war with the temporary rulers of Portugal, the Spanish. The rest remained until the end of the 20th century as they finally gained their due independence after democracy was implemented in Portugal. Next, at number 9, we move all the way to Asia, to the Yuan Dynasty. The Yuan came to be as a consequence of the Mongol Empire's collapse, something I'll mention further when we get to the Mongol Empire on this list. Although the Mongols had ruled territories, including northern China for decades, it was not until 1271 that the Kublai Khan officially proclaimed the dynasty in the traditional Chinese style, ruling until 1368. His realm was by this point isolated from the other Mongol Khanats and controlled most of modern day China, surrounding areas, including modern Mongolia. In addition to Emperor of China, 
Kublai Khan also claimed the title of Great Khan, and therefore the Yuan was also sometimes referred to as the Empire of the Great Khan. Essentially, this was the portion of the Mongol Empire in actual Mongolia and China. As the empire collapsed, it became an empire of its own until it began its period of decay. From what I understood, internal struggles of power and poor administration led to the weakening of their power, outlaws gained strength, and Yuan's armies dwindled. Eventually, they lost all power and were succeeded by the Ming Dynasty in China, the Pagmodrupa in Tibet, and only a few distant relatives maintained some power in Mongolia itself. Back to the West, in the Middle East, North Africa, and Europe, Umayyad. the Umayyad, from 661 to 750. At its greatest extent, the Umayyad so actually, Empire it actually occupied... Did, actually did reach um, Spain, but it's like the northern parts of Africa and sort of Port Asia as well, basically. Really much East. all of the Middle East, stretching into the Caucasus, Persia, all of North Africa, and almost all of the Iberian Peninsula. From what I could find, its origin has to do with the Muslim prophet Muhammad and the expansion of Islam in its early days. The first Umayyad leader was Uthman, Muhammad's secretary and third successor. The truth is, it didn't fall upon the Umayyad dynasty to conquer all of its lands, as they inherited many of them from the Rashidun Empire, the first of the four major empires established after the death of Muhammad. The Rashidun already held most of the Middle East, Persia, and Egypt, which they had conquered by their own merit, but also due to a good seizing of opportunity, as there were big conflicts between the Byzantine Empire and Persia. The Arabs were able to take advantage of that and assert themselves as the main power of the region. The Umayyads then inherited these lands and expanded them further, conquering the Maghreb and the Iberian Peninsula. If the Rashidun had the advantage of being the main force representing Islamic faith amongst Arabs, the Umayyad had an equally big advantage. Islam was beginning to spread to non-Arab populations of their mm. empire, which they could then mobilize for their conquests. In fact, it is said that the conquest of the Iberian Peninsula was mainly accomplished by Berber forces who had converted to Islam under Umayyad rule. Essentially, they were a large empire because they inherited from the Rashidun, and both the Rashidun and the Umayyad were able to hold such a large empire and expanded due to the emergence and expansion of the Muslim faith which they embodied. Their demise came after a defeat against the Byzantines in Constantinople, stopping their expansion into the Balkans. Fa it's so crazy to me how like you have the rise of these empires and then you have the fall. It's just crazy how an empire can be so powerful. And then suddenly a new empire pops up and then this empire is going to end up falling and this one rises. It's just crazy how that sort of stuff works, how things work in sort of cycles and just just how things work like that. I just find it really Failed interesting. Failed reforms man. attempting to equalize the people led to internal rivalries and the Reconquista beginning in Portugal and Spain also contributed to their doom. After many Iberian defeats, the Umayyads faced an internal revolt led by the Abbasid family, which then took power and control of their lands. However, the Arab Empire was not fully destroyed, and they now called it the Abbasid Empire, still ranking seventh in the world's largest empires. Jeez. Although it's somewhat unfair for it to take two places, given that it's technically the same empire, just with different ruling dynasties. The Umayyad are said to have used a plain white standard, while the Abbasid used a plain black one, being oh, an empire from 750 to 12 58. At this time, years. their territory had been somewhat reduced, and the border which used to be at the north of the Iberian Peninsula was now in Tunisia. The expansion had been pushed back. But here's the thing, there were still moors in the Iberian Peninsula, and in fact, the Umayyads still ruled them because of internal struggles. The Abbasids were forced to hand over the local rule of the southern Iberian Peninsula to the Umayyads. And in fact, this repeated itself in almost all regions, so their grip on power weakened year by year. Morocco went to the Idrisids, Egypt to the Fatimids, and Persia to the Safarids. And their political power was limited more and more until they held a simply 
ceremonial religious function in most of the lands, only retaining control of the Mesopotamia area. They abandoned Mesopotamia after the Mongols invaded and sacked Baghdad, fleeing to Cairo and settling there. At this point, their rule was severely, if not almost totally limited, and the dynasties they delegated portions of the empire to took full control as their own independent states. Next are the French. We have to divide the French empire into two. The first one mostly focused on continental Europe with Napoleon. I know that uh, there's a lot of French speaking African countries. I know there's a big influence there. I don't know if that's because of colonization or for other reasons, but I'm guessing the second one will be like uh, the majority, not majority, large parts of, of Africa that they sort of colonized and places. And I know they have a lot of islands around the world, like just around the world, but I don't know which sort of countries are French speaking that aren't in Africa. Canada, of course. Canada's a, b a good, good shout. Napoleon's conquest of most of the continent. Some, like, this was from 1804 like to 1815. Stuff, through its conquests, France directly ruled or through client states. Spain, France itself with a large territorial expansion reaching into Belgium, Rhineland and the Netherlands, most of Western Germany, Poland and Italy. And then we have France's actual colonial empire. France ruled a gigantic portion of current day Canada and the United States. The United States they lost with Napoleon's decision to sell Louisiana, abandoning a strong colonial policy to focus on its European conquests. The loss of Canada had to do with the defeat against the British in a war. However, their colonial empire wasn't fully lost. And in this map, in the darker blue, we can see the colonial possessions they remained having or expanded into after 1830. A lot of Northwest Africa, French Guiana, parts of the Middle East, Madagascar, and French Indochina. There's not much to talk about in this one other than describe what it was, a colonial empire that they expanded into, as other European nations did, and a continental empire they conquered with Napoleon. The European one was lost with Napoleon's defeat, and the colonial was lost first with the American losses I just mentioned, and then the rest after the end of World War II and the beginning of Africa's decolonization process. I could mention how each of the territories was acquired and lost, but I think that's too in-depth for a video like this. If you want detailed videos for some of these empires, let me know in the comments below. Entering the top five, we have the Spanish Empire. This one follows mm. the French trend of having both a European Florida, continental no, dimension well. and a colonial they one. Continentally, they held a great deal of land oh, due to the nasty- Mexico, that's a good, that's very true. Actually, I do know that now I hear about it, I know it. A lot of the Americas, nowhere really else. Um, a bit of Asia, tiny, tiny bit of Europe. I think that's Denmark. But the majority of the the majority of the Americas are Spanish, like Spanish, like like they colonized, which is very, like really, really surprising. I didn't know that was the case. The unions and inheritance more than conquest through the Spanish branch of the Habsburg dynasty. Because of these dynastic reasons, they ruled Sardinia, Sicily, Naples, Milan, and the Netherlands, territories they lost up to 1714. Through their colonial empire, they also ruled part of the Caribbean with special attention to Cuba and Puerto Rico, which they lost along with the Philippines to the United States after being defeated well. in a war against them. Their American possessions were unbelievably vast, occupying essentially all of Southern America, with the exception of Brazil and the Guianas, all of Central America, all of Mexico, and stretching immensely into the United States. These lands in America they lost during the Hispanic-American Wars of Independence from 1808 to 1833. They temporarily ruled Louisiana, but this just had to do with some family business strategy of Napoleon. For a period of time, Spain's empire grew even larger during the times of the Iberian Union when, due to the lack of an heir, the Spanish king inherited the Portuguese crown and empire, becoming between 1580 and 1640 arguably one of the or the most powerful emperor in the world at the time. Then, like all other empires, especially colonial ones, they lost their power and influence as time went by. The last remnants of the empire were the African possessions, 
limited because due to the Treaty of Tordesillas signed in the early days of European colonialism when Portugal and Spain were the initial and only explorers of the New World, they divided potential discoveries and Spain got most of America while Portugal got Africa. But even these small Spanish African lands were lost in the decolonization of Africa. Occupying much of the territory of modern China, although they also counted Qing with dynasty. many vassal states, the Qing Empire. Qing the Qing dynasty was the last imperial dynasty of China. It was established in 1636 and ruled China from 1644 to 1912. It was preceded by the Mings and succeeded by the Republic of China. The empire lasted for almost three centuries and formed the territorial base for modern China. Being founded by the Manchu, one of China's five peoples, they established a Manchu state. Their power began to grow in Manchuria and soon after they were able to attack the Ming dynasty, who ruled China at the time, defeating their army occupying several border towns and then full-on invading the rest. After establishing control of Ming's territories, they expanded them further. The Qing Dynasty occupied all of modern China, Tibet, Taiwan, and counted with several tributary states, such as Nepal, Burma, Siam, Laos, Tonkin in today's Vietnam and Korea, but their rule eventually came to an end. After more than a century of issues with the West, through colonization, the seeding of cities for trade and wars which they lost, the Qing dynasty collapsed in the early 1900s. Internal issues also played a major role in their downfall, one of which being population growth, which led to food shortages and regular famine. With their collapse, a 2000 year period of imperial China came to an end and China wow. became a republic. The Russian Empire opens up the top three. It was essentially just a rebranding of the Tsardom of Russia from 1721 to 1917. The Tsardom itself had existed since 1547 and before that the Grand Duchy of Moscow since 1283. It's important to mention these three phases because it was throughout them that Russia's territory continued to grow as first the duchy, then the Tsardom, and finally the empire expanded their rule into increasingly further away lands from the core territory of Moscow. The reason why they expanded so much and got so huge is that the land was very little occupied. In the past, nations could just claim large tracts of land if no one challenged their claims. Essentially, they conquered more and more lands because it was easy to do. They did, however, have some difficult conquests, such as the access to the Baltic by going to war against Sweden, then Poland, lands in the south in wars against the Ottomans and Persians, the expansion into the Caucasus, lands in China, and the expansion into Alaska, which they held until its sale to the United States. Most of the other territories remained Russian until the end of the Soviet Union. In second place, having occupied some territory Mongols, which yeah. later belonged to the Russians, the Mongol Empire. From 1206 to 1368, the Mongol Empire grew from a reasonably sized Guys. domain in Mongolia to a nomadic empire, which stretched from Korea and South China to Ukraine and the Baltic shore. God its damn. first and greatest ruler was Genghis Khan, a man extremely yeah, skilled as a general for his troops. However, an important detail was the existence of many other strong, powerful, and skilled generals that led various armies or hordes so the empire could expand in various directions at the same time not depending on a single large force this might be why it expanded so quickly another reason is that a lot of the territory were vast deserts or horse friendly plains most of the mongol forces rode on a horse this landscape helped the empire in two ways one it was quick to travel across and two there weren't many people in it being sparsely populated and thus easier to conquer in very similar fashion to what we saw happen with Russia. Genghis Khan died in 1227, by which time the Mongol Empire ruled from the Pacific Ocean to the Caspian Sea, an empire twice the size of the Romans, and yet it still continued to grow really? for a while. The empire the hasn't been mentioned yet. And the UK or Britain has, I'm sure that's going to be number one then, but the Romans, I would have thought... And the split due to wars over succession as the grandchildren of Genghis like Khan disputed power. As the Mongol Empire collapsed, its territory was divided amongst many other states which inherited them, some being large enough to consider themselves empires of their own. In the case of the Mongols, it was the Yuan Dynasty, which we've already talked about, but also the Golden Horde, the Chagatai Khanate, and the Ilkhanate. And finally, the largest empire in the history of the world, 
the British Empire. The British Empire is similar to only one on this list in terms of its nature. Like, obviously, this is something that I do know about, but it, when you actually think about it, it's crazy how it is just literally everywhere. And I, I find it even crazy because it's a lot more sort of recent, not a lot, it's not recent, but actually, when actually, when actually the was Portuguese it? One, because it was an colonial 1700s? empire, being an island. After conquering Great Britain and temporarily Ireland, there wasn't much else to do. Continental expansion was never an option because water. However, the British were very different from the Portuguese in their colonial empire. Not only because it was immensely larger, but also because of the way it was ruled. A big issue the Portuguese had was lack of population to effectively colonize the lands they reached, and consequently, large armies to fully conquer local rulers. That's why they opted by the commercial outposts in most cases. But the British didn't have this issue. And so, while their empire originated with mere possessions and trading posts established by England, it soon grew to have official dominions, colonies, protectorates, and mandates, a bureaucratic organization like almost no other. By 1913, the British Empire ruled 412 million 1913 that is ridiculous and then it all came tumbling and i'm actually happy dude i don't even care i'm not one of those people who's like ah oh, why can't we rule other countries like, i don't understand i mean i understand why for power and stuff but now I'd, i'm just happy that it's just that it's not the case it might sound good i don't know how to put it but i know there's just certain people from this country or from other countries that sort of like take pride in ruling um ruling all these countries there's no pride in that, man. There's no pride in that at all. People, 23% of the world population at the time, covering around one quarter of the world. Okay, that As is a result, crazy. its political, legal, linguistic, and cultural legacy is widespread. The phrase, the empire on which the sun never sets, was often used to describe the British Empire as its reach around the globe meant that the sun was always shining on at least one of its territories. First, they consolidated their rule of North America through a series of wars against France. Then, through the East India Company, they conquered Bengal from the Mughal Empire, beginning their domain of India. They had a pretty big step back with the independence of the 13 colonies, but it didn't slow them down elsewhere, especially because after defeating Napoleon in the early 1800s, they consolidated their place as the world's biggest naval power. And I think this was a key element in the growth and maintenance of is. their empire, the almost unmatched power of the Royal Navy. Other important elements that allowed for the great expansion were technology, as the Industrial Revolution began in Britain, the fact they had reasonable internal stability, and also the administrative organization they had. By organizing their territories, delegating competences, for years. instance, through the East India Company, etc. And through these factors and many others, they were able to expand immensely. I mean, look at the map. At one point or another, they ruled all of this land. From about one third of North America, half the Caribbean, half the Middle East, this entire strip of Africa from the Suez to Cape Town, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Burma, a great deal of Southeast Asia, Australia, and New Zealand, not to mention the various islands across the oceans, the trade cities in China, and their strategic holdings in the Mediterranean, Gibraltar, Malta, and Cyprus. And the incredible thing about the British Empire is that, despite it being heavily fought against by locals who were oppressed and explored by the British, they managed to hold on to a great deal of it until the decolonization period of the 20th century. And many of its greatest colonies like Canada, Australia, and New Zealand maintain extremely close relationships with the British today, some even counting the British monarch as their head of state, and almost really? all being a part of the British Commonwealth Organization. There are also a few examples of very large and famous empires which don't right. make the top 10 in terms of size, yeah. but due to their enormous importance in world history, could not go unmentioned. Among these are the Empire of Japan, the Roman Empire, the Ottoman Empire, and the Macedonian Empire of Alexander the Great. If you like any of these or any of the ones that I mentioned and want me to do an in-depth video about them, just let me know. So that was a quick overview of the world's largest empires throughout history. None of them, Shout this them resisted until today, although all of them contributed to the way our world was shaped. So it is kind of true, actually, like colonization was kind of stuff. It is crazy how it all like led to like where we are now. Like all these different things probably led to 
uh, technology moving forward. As we saw with the British Empire, the, the Industrial Revolution, but what I saw in a previous video, and what I just kind of know is, war leads to improvement in technology for certain areas, and it's just like, if it wasn't for this kind of stuff happening, who knows what we'd be doing? Maybe computers wouldn't be a thing anymore, or like PCs wouldn't be a thing, the screen that I'm on, me doing this YouTube thing, just wouldn't be there. I mean, that's looking very deeply into it, but you just don't know. But the, So the title is The Biggest Empires in World History. I guess he means that by sort of size. Because I, I do think of the Roman Empire, like I'm kind of confused. I think most people... Um, why some big interesting empires? I think most people didn't read the ending part where he mentioned that also also important empires like the Rome, Ottoman, Macedonian empires, because everyone in the comments argued about those. And let's not forget this video is the biggest empire in size, so it is in size. We need top ten smallest empires. <laughs> Good idea. Is that actually going to be a video? If he does that, that would be hilarious. To all people who are going to argue in the comments, big equals not good. Big doesn't always mean good, basically. I would like to see a map with all the fortifications ever built by the Portuguese throughout the world, be it those made of stone, wood, or simply earthworks. He advertised the server finally. 740, the guy looks like the villager from Minecraft. The phrase, the empire on which the sun never sets, was the Spanish phrase in the early 16th by Carlos V. Britain ruled over all this, part of West Germany, am I a joke to you? Are you Portuguese, you have a really good accent when you said, Fiturias. Oh, he is. Oh, it's actually Portuguese. I don't even know that. This makes me wonder why I haven't why I haven't covered the alternate history of Portugal more often. I'll touch on it some time in the future. <laughs> Portugal, Carlo. <laughs> I'd like to see you go into a deep dive into the Chinese dynasties. I think it'd be an interesting topic. Man, the history of the world is so fun to learn about. There's so many different aspects of the history, even recent history, past history, things from ages ago. Just all of it. It's just so fun to like learn about, man. But. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this reaction. If you want to see more from this guy's channel, let me know, or just other historical videos in general. Just let me know and comment underneath what you'd like to see. But hopefully you guys enjoyed. Until next time, like, subscribe. Peace.